This is the strongest army in history. This is the strongest, mightiest, ancient army in history. My first show, the top 10 armies of all time, according to Watch Mojo. Okay. This is. From October 28th, 2013. Okay. This right here is just a list showing some armies that people view in history as great, powerful armies. Okay. But these armies that you're going to see are not to be compared with the army which I'm about to show which is the actual mightiest ancient army, okay? Army of all time. If you're gonna make history, you might have to put up a fight. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 armies of all time. Watch! For this list, we look for armies whose charismatic leaders, technological innovations, and military conquests brought about significant watershed moments over the course of human history. We're using fictionalized movie versions to illustrate most of these armies for obvious reasons. Yeah! Number 10, the Huns under Attila. mysterious tribe from the Near East, the Huns contributed to the barbarian onslaught, leading to the collapse of Roman civilization. Skilled swordsmen, and with a formidable force of mounted archers, the Huns went from 4th century mercenaries to 5th century empire builders, decimating the Eastern Roman Empire, irreparably damaging the West, and establishing their own imperial rule from the Baltic to the Black Sea. <laughs> The Spartans. A civilization of professional soldiers, Sparta had the most feared and revered army of the classical age. Their military prowess was best illustrated at the Battle of Thermopylae, where 300 Spartans defended a key military access point against thousands of Persian invaders. Though they died and lost the battle, their efforts helped win the war, expelling the Persians from Greece and solidifying the Spartan soldiers' place in history. Number eight, the Red Army. <laughs> Having brought down one of the oldest dynasties in all of Europe, the Soviet Red Army was a highly disciplined force of over 5 million by 1920. In years to come, it continued to grow, defeating Hitler on the Eastern Front in the Second World War and establishing itself as the only real challenge to American military dominance during the last half of the 20th century. Number seven, the British Redcoats. Though most likely associated with the British troops who fought in the American War of Independence, the Redcoats were actually all non-commissioned soldiers who served between 1760 and 1860. The Redcoats fought at the Battle of Waterloo, served under General Wolfe in the Battle of Quebec, and were part of the Allied forces during the Crimean War. In short, they were an essential component during Britain's imperialist era. Ah! Number 6. The Mongolian Army Known for their deft skills on horseback, this army swept through Asia in the 1200s, bringing down both the Qin and Sung empires, unifying China for the first time in centuries. <laughs> Under the visionary leadership of Genghis Khan, his son Ogadai and grandson Kublai Khan, the Mongolian army established its military dominance all the way to the borders of Europe. Number five, the Roman army of Julius Caesar. Rome's military built a thousand-year empire, but even within this history, Julius Caesar's army stands out. Caesar and his men battled against the Gauls, expanding Roman territory to northern Europe. 
When the Senate became weary of Caesar's power and influence, a civil war erupted. Caesar's army crossed the Rubicon and defeated his adversaries. In doing so, this army brought down Rome's Republic and ushered in the era of the Roman Empire. Number 4. The German Wehrmacht Bouncing back from the humiliation of World War I, the German Wehrmacht army was an innovative force whose expansionist mandate brought about a second worldwide conflict. Utilizing lightning warfare, or Blitzkrieg, the German armed forces launched rapid assaults, bewildering their opponents. In the first two years of World War II, Germany looked set to win. It was not until U.S. involvement and Hitler's miscalculations on the Eastern Front that this army experienced decisive losses and ultimate defeat. Number 3. The Greco-Macedonians under two great generals of history, Philip II and his son Alexander the Great, the Macedonian army dominated much of the civilized world in the 4th century BC. Technological innovation to the classical Greek phalanx, the sheer fierceness of its soldiers, and the genius of its leaders allowed this army to take over Greece, Egypt, and the entire Persian Empire, all within 36 years. <laughs> Number two, Napoleon's Grande Armée. Emboldened by the spirit of the revolution and led by a military visionary, this army established France's hegemonic power over Europe. Comprised of nearly 30,000 men, Napoleon's troops were the most formidable of the era. Tactical flexibility and the ability to divide enemy forces before their ultimate defeat was the key to their success. It would take a coalition of all European powers to eventually bring Napoleon down. Number 1. American Military in the 20th Century With a standing army of over 1.4 million, the American military is the most formidable force of the modern age. U.S. involvement in World War I and World War II changed the course of each conflict and established America as the most powerful army in the world. It continued to flex its muscle during the Korean, Vietnam, Gulf, Afghani, and Second Iraqi Wars, and continues to be a major military watchdog on the international stage. With new videos published every day, make sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. There you have it. Okay. Armies that this world deems is high powered. You got the US military, you got the Russian army, okay, you got armies back then, okay, Napoleon army, British red coats, Spartans, Roman army, but all those forces are not to be compared to the tabernacle of David. This is the Lord's army. This is the Most High's army, okay? This is his force, his military, whatever you want to call it, okay? And the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God, the Creator, okay? He's with certain men on this earth, okay? And during this time, back then, okay, during the time of David, the Heavenly Father was with David. When the Heavenly Father is with certain individuals, okay, the Heavenly Father preserves them, okay, and uses them as examples of courage and might. Because, this is the reason, because those certain individuals are righteous, they follow the Heavenly Father's rules. Okay. And the tabernacle of David were Israelites only. Okay. The Most High's chosen people. And the nation of Israel today are you so called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans? Because you fit the curses in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Okay. You fit the curses. That's why you're the children of Israel. Okay? 
because the curses in Deuteronomy 28 chapter fit these people in this sign. Okay, exactly. If you go and read them down to six, 16, down to 68. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16, down to 68. It fits these people in this sign. Okay, these people are the poor of the world. Okay, but they have the flavor of the world. Okay, they're the life of the world. Okay, so these are the Israelites according to the Bible. So the tabernacle of David, okay, the Lord's army, because the Heavenly Father was with them, it was beyond all the armies of this world. This is Amos 9-11, and they are being raised back up today. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. Okay. So the tabernacle of David is being raised today. Okay. It's not a it's not a coincidence that during World War Three you have all these armies that are getting suited up, getting prepared nuclear weapons. The Heavenly Father is raising his force, okay? Because America is going to lose World War III, okay? Because America's is battling the great according to the scriptures. America is going to lose World War III, all right? And the Heavenly Father is going to take out America with vast amounts of plagues. ICBM nuclear missiles, that's going to be shot at America, Real soon. Okay. And the Lord's going to have certain men have spiritual power. What the world calls superpowers, strange abilities that people are not, people don't regularly, reg, people don't usually see. The Heavenly Father's going to have certain men have these abilities. Okay. To go execute judgment. The Heavenly Father is going to have his holy angels execute judgment and wrath towards the wicked of this earth. And of course, his only begotten son when he comes back. Because the Heavenly Father is a man of war and so is his son. Okay? So the tabernacle of David is being raised up today. Because we're living in the last days. They were the strongest force. The strongest army. Okay. Not the armies that I just showed in the beginning. Okay. Even the U.S. Army. With all the. With all their carnal might that they. Um, show in. They, all the carnal might that they. Um boast about the heavenly father is not with them when the heavenly father is with the tabernacle of david which he was back then okay they were a bad force to reckon with okay because they were righteous following his rules okay and they were israelites of all these 18 nations, because there's 18 nations in the Bible, okay? There's 18 nations. So, since there's 18 nations, okay, the Heavenly Father has a chosen nation that he chose to be a nation unto himself. That's the nation of Israel. The people I just showed in the beginning, okay? But all these other nations, the Heavenly Father's not dealing with. Okay, all the military that they promote, the Heavenly Father's not dealing with their army. He just raises certain um, forces up to take down his nation, to punish his chosen nation for not following the law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible, for being disobedient. Okay, because when they 
When the Israelites don't follow the law, statutes, commandments of the Bible, the Heavenly Father puts them on punishment and makes them lose to their enemies. But when they follow the Heavenly Father, He makes them win. Which just shows that carnal training and carnal might is basically futile. Of course, it can gain you some um, advantage, but carnal training and carnal might the Heavenly Father controls everyone's path. There's no such thing as free will. So if the Heavenly Father controls everyone's path, He can make whoever He wants to win, win. At any moment. Okay? It just... They, they even show that in... The Heavenly Father makes that example in um, fights, boxing, UFC. It just takes one knockout to knock somebody out. With, but that other person... The person who got knocked out, they could have trained better than the person who knocked them out. But the Heavenly Father just makes whoever wins, which shows you that it's just the Heavenly Father who he picks who wins. He picks who has courage, okay? Who's going to be not afraid. Even though fear's up against them, who's going to still go up against it, okay? The Heavenly Father uses... Israelites to be his main example of showing no fear, showing courage. Okay. And he's going to raise up the tabernacle of David. It's already being raised up. You have Israelites remembering who they were. Their past, not their past life, but remembering their heritage. Okay. You have so-called Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, all the people on that sign waking up to the fact that they're Israelites and not so-called black people, Native Americans and Dominicans, okay? So that's prophecies right there, okay? More prophecies of the Bible, World War III is coming. A new world order is coming. RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast, is going to be mass spread across this globe okay race riots okay more diseases famines all this is prophesied in the bible and they are things that are about to come to this world This is Joshua chapter 10 and verse 11. Okay. Now Joshua was a man that the Heavenly Father used to use as an example. Okay. Of a mighty man in war. Okay. And this is some, this is a feat Joshua did through the power of the Lord. Okay. And whether you don't want to believe the Bible or not, it's still true. Okay. The Bible is just a, a giant history book. Okay. Of a, focusing on a certain nation of people, but it has a lot of history of other nations, okay, as well. But its main focus is the nation of Israel. This is Joshua chapter 10 and verse 11. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Bethlehem, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah. So the Heavenly Father cast down stones from heaven, okay, unto the opposite army that the Israelites were against. It says, and they died, they were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. Okay? And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed. So the sun stood still, and the moon stayed. Okay? The Heavenly Father has certain Israelites do feats that are beyond the normal, beyond what people usually see today. Splitting the Red Sea, Moses, okay? The Lord, 
who the world calls Jesus Christ, all the works that he did in Rome. Okay, Joshua. All right, had the moon and had the moon and sun stand still. It says, "Unto the people have avenged themselves upon their enemies." Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hastened not to go down about a whole day. Okay. So this is the mightiest force. Okay. And they're going to be raised up to a level that's mightier than, than the time back then. Okay. Because the Lord's going to show greater works to magnify himself today. Okay. Greater works than the than his only begotten son did in Rome. Okay. To be a witness to the world. Okay. Because the world's going to know that the heavenly father is true. The God of Israel. You're going to know he's true. You're going to know he's real. He exists. You're going to know his son exists. Okay, that spiritual power exists, that nothing's impossible with the Most High. Okay, so you don't have to believe in the Bible, but it's still true. This is Joshua 23 and 10. One man of you shall chase a thousand, for the Lord your power, he it is that fighteth for you as he have promised you. So, one man, okay, the Heavenly Father is with a righteous Israelite shall chase a thousand, okay? So that just shows when the Heavenly Father's with certain men, okay, who are righteous, they can do feats that are beyond the normal eye, okay? Chasing a thousand other men, okay? Is there, did the Mongols do that? One man chasing a thousand, Okay, fighting a thousand men. Did the Napoleon's army, did the Roman army, did the U.S. army do that? Did the Russian army, the um, Germany, their army, did they do that? Okay. Chasing a thousand men as one man. Okay. That's the type of power that's coming towards certain individuals real soon who are Israelites, okay? And to be an Israelite, the main key is to be drawn to this word, this gospel, this good news. It's the spirit. That's the key, okay? Outer appearance is an indicator, okay? Because we know who the, where the tribes are centralized today, okay? these people on this sign but the men on this sign slept with a lot of different foreign women and down the line their child did not look like a typical average day israelite their child okay because they slept with foreign women so the mother had certain features and when the man slept with that mother their child comes out and the child may not look exactly like the father looked like and down the line, what if that child slept with a different foreign woman who's not an Israelite? So down the line, you have a lot of Israelites because Israel has been scattered. You have a lot of Israelites who do not look like a typical Negro, West Indian, Haitian, Dominican, Cuban, North American Indian, Seminole Indian, Mexican. They don't look like a typical average day Israelite. Okay. But they still are Israelites because it's the spirit. Okay, you are what your father is. Okay, this is Jeremiah 16 and 16. This is a time that's about to come to this earth real soon. Behold, I will send for many fishers to as of okay, um, the recording of this video, I don't know when you may someone may be watching this but as of right now you have Israelite men preaching the word of the heavenly father fishing for the elect okay who are about to wake up the israelites preaching the word preaching the gospel okay the hundred percent truth which comes out the camp of great millstone okay 
you have certain um, men who are preaching the Heavenly Father's word, fishing, being fishers of men. It says, Behold, I'll send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after, so there's going to be a point after that, I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. Okay? So the Heavenly Father will put certain spirits on a certain individual to go hunt, all right, whoever the Heavenly Father wants them to hunt, okay, with power, spiritual power, okay, that's coming to this earth. This is Daniel 7, 18, because the way America was established was rape, rob, and murder, violence, though, with the way America was established. So the heavenly father with violence shall Babylon fall because America's Babylon the great during World War three, the war to end all wars is going to be a lot of violence. That's what the heavenly father is doing. That's what he's building up. This is Daniel chapter seven, verse 18. But the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever. So it says the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. The saints according to the Bible are the Israelites. According to Psalm chapter 15 verse 5. Okay. In Psalms chapter 149. The saints are the Israelites. So the Israelites are going to take the kingdom. Okay. And specifically the elect. Okay. Because they're going to be Say thou the trouble and wrath that's about to come to this world, okay? And they're going to, certain individuals the Heavenly Father gives the power to are going to literally have power to subdue their enemies, okay? And the Heavenly Father is going to make America fall with a lot of violence because the Lord is going to come back with the world calls Jesus Christ, and he's coming back to slay a lot of people with the host of heaven, okay? Righteous, powerful, um, and angels, okay? Who are men, are coming back with the Lord, Yahweh Shai, okay? To, um, for violence, okay? And also to save the elect. Okay. So the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, possess the kingdom for eat forever, even forever. Okay. So possess the kingdom forever. That's the kingdom. That's that's the rulership that's after America, the, the next society. That's the kingdom of heaven. It's after America. What the world calls heaven, it's a society that's only for Israelites only. And the elected will be the first fruits of it. Or we'll take part of the kingdom first. Okay? Because they're going to repent and come back to the Heavenly Father and change their ways and rehearse the righteous acts of being an Israelite. Showing their faith by their actions. Trying to follow the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of their ability during this grace period. To build a faith that the Most High is going to save them. Okay? Who are sincerely going to try and please their power. Okay? That's the elect right there. Okay, the Most High's chosen remnant of his people that he's going to save. Okay. First. All right. This is Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Okay. So. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So certain individuals the Most High is going to give spiritual power to, what the world calls superpowers, strange abilities, okay? The Heavenly Father is going to give it to certain people on this earth, all right? And they're going to be Israelites, Israelite men, 
Okay? Because the heavenly father is raising up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen. Okay? People view so-called blacks, Hispanics, and the Americans as the, yeah, they're the, yeah, they're a strong race of people, but they're at the bottom and they're outcasts. They can't do anything in World War III. Okay? They don't have a force, but the elect, we do have a force. Okay? That's coming from the skies. Okay? This is Revelation 12 and 7. And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels. Michael's a top archangel, okay? The Lord, Yahweh is over him. It says, and there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, okay? So Michael, the host of heaven, holy angels, are coming back to fight against the so-called white man's army, okay? NATO and the EU, okay? The Caucasian, what you call the Caucasian race, their army. They're going to turn to fight against the Lord and his angels. Okay. As well as the other armies of this earth are going to join up and try to fight the Lord. Okay. Because the Lord's coming back with so-called UFOs. Okay. Because the Heavenly Father's army, his force is beyond all the forces of this world. Okay. It says, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, okay? So the so-called white man, his military structure, his kingdom is not going to prevail. And prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven, okay? So they're going to lose drastically, okay, to the Lord Yahweh Shai, who's coming back in the so-called UFO, the fathership, Okay? So, the strongest ancient army is the Tabernacle of David, okay? The Most High's army, the Heavenly Father's force, okay? And they're going to be raised up, okay? They're being raised up. It first starts with wisdom, okay? Fearing the Lord, preparing to get yourself right for the evil day, okay? Repenting and change your ways and being righteous, it first starts with that, okay? And the Lord is going to have heavily holy angels crack the sky with, of course, the only begotten son to take down Babylon, okay? That's what's coming to this world. The army of God. Lord, will this video was edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. All praise, honor, and infinite glory go to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rekakadash, Shalom Yasharallah, Shalom.